Does Team USA deserve more credit? Because we were all critical in the beginning when they lost some of those games. Not me. You know, listen, I, I, I've always felt like this is a terrible. How many times have I been on this show saying, you don't need your top number one A-list from top to bottom to win the gold medal? We're the United States of America, and when it comes to the game of basketball, we are supreme, we are superior, we take a backseat to no one, and we should be able to beat anybody. Now, watching the game from start to finish against France, there were things that I noticed, obviously, and you know this, but you're not really paying attention to it when you read about it, Max. When you sit back and watch it, it's like, damn, you know, uh, no three seconds. It's 10-minute quarters instead of uh, 12. It's five fouls. And then you see the ticky-tack fouls that, 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 you know, they were calling against the U.S. at times. And then at other times, allowing a lot of contact. When you look at the uh, European players, particularly France with Rudy Gobert um, and that other guy, I forgot his name, please forgive me. The bottom line is, is that in the end, what it came down to is that they were willing to pound and muscle the ball inside. And obviously, size wasn't on uh, Team USA side, and we got all of that. But in the end, you got KD, you got Draymond, who's an elite defender. You saw Damian Lillard come on in the fourth quarter. You saw Jason Tatum helping out uh, Kevin Durant because Kevin Durant clearly was on a mission. You saw a lot of dudes chipping in. Drew Holiday playing exceptional defense, et cetera, et cetera. I just liked a lot about what I saw, and I thought that when you look at Team USA, so what? The games are going to be a bit more compelling because you're going across the ocean and you're playing a completely different brand of basketball than you had been playing from 80 for 72 regular season games this season. Season, 82 normally along with postseason play because most of the dudes who are competing in Olympic competition are usually postseason players. All of those things get taken into consideration. I mean, listen, Kendrick Perkins is a big boy. He can defend himself, but I had no problem with Draymond or KD, you know, going at critics, pointing out how people were counting them out or questioning them. When you win and you achieve the goal, which they did, you deserve to stick out your chest and say to some folks, how dare you doubt us? They've earned it. I got mad love and respect for what they accomplished, and I never doubted that they would because I knew that we were superior. We are superior when it comes to the world of basketball, and we will continue to be superior for decades to come. Well, let me start by saying who won the most gold medals in the entire Olympics? USA. Who won the most medals, period, in the entire yes. Olympics? That would be Team USA. USA right? So That's when right. Draymond says, act like you're American, I'm sure Kendrick Perkins is, I don't want to speak for Kendrick either, I'm sure he's just as happy about that as you, me, and Molly, and, and Draymond, and KD. We're all very happy about that. Perk's criticism is the re, like, this, this is where people can't have it both ways. Do they deserve more credit? Well, then, if so, it's because they were imperiled for the exact reasons you point out, Stephen A., I also made them the favorites to win the whole thing, even without our A team. We didn't send Steph and Harden and LeBron and KD and AD. Some guys were hurt, some guys, whatever. That team, no matter what, how long the other teams played together for, I'm not wet. I'm not, I'm not stressing it. I'm good. I'm good. We're good. We'll beat them. That's not the team we sent. We didn't even send the next version of that team. We probably sent the third best version of the team we might have sent. Does that okay. make me nervous? Yes, for the reasons you pointed out. Partly. It's different kind of rules, different kind of fouls called. It's a, it's a slightly different game. The three-point line is in making everyone a better shooter. Also, you're throwing together a team of guys who have to play against guys who've been playing for half a dozen years together. If you just looked at the strength of the rosters, <laughs> Team USA has a team that, if they played together all the time, would crush everyone and win a championship in the NBA. No other country has a team that would win a championship in the NBA. Of course we got the best roster. There are all the other factors I just mentioned making it hairy. And how hairy was it? We lost back-to-back -back exhibitions to Australia and Nigeria. We lost to France once play started. You know, we had to come back. Those guys had to come back on Australia in order to get to France in the gold medal round. It took, it took a great performance by KD. So if we're sitting here asking... Do these guys deserve more credit? And I'll say, yeah, they deserve more credit. Then we're also acknowledging that they, what they did wasn't a given, even if they were favored. What they did was difficult to do. You can't both say it was easy to do and they, and they deserve credit. If they deserve credit, it's because it was tough and they did it. Good for them.
Well, you, they deserve credit, but it wasn't just tough on a basketball court, Max. You got COVID. You got the, you know, the debilitating circumstances that that's created. You got them playing overseas um, and, and not in front of a, fa uh, of a fan base. That obviously has an effect on you. You got, uh, a, you know, a, a, at least a third of their roster that couldn't show up until, you know, the finals were over because Drew Holiday, Middleton, and Devin Booker had to compete in the NBA finals. And Drew Holiday was a, an incredibly big-time component in all of this. Look at the lockdown effort he put against Patty Mills in Australia um, and obviously against France in the closeout game as well in the, in the gold medal game. You got to take all of those things into consideration. And so when I look at these things and I look at the circumstances, you can sit up there and say the world – um, has been dealing with it, and that would be true. But then we take into account the fact that the world have been playing again, the rest of the world have been playing together for years. That's not the case with this team. And also, you had an entirely different coaching staff. You had Jay Wright. You had uh, Steve Kerr as assistants, along with Greg Popovich being the head coach of the squad. And so you got to pay attention to all of those different things, and I'm looking at it from that perspective as well. And I'm just saying that Lloyd Pierce, let's not forget him, the former Atlanta Hawks head coach, uh, he was on the bench as well. So you had an entirely different coaching staff and obviously a slew of different players, a third of which couldn't even show up until later, um, after the NBA Finals were over, you had COVID to consider as well. Uh, you got a whole bunch of things that Even they that. were working against that other teams didn't have to in previous years. And that's why I say give them credit where credit is due. It was tougher, but it wasn't just because of basketball. There were other mitigating circumstances that they had to deal with. And they still handled their business. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.